Praise God. We want to give God thanks and praise because God is a good God. We're serving the true and living God, the one who can do all things but fail. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to St. Mark chapter St. Mark chapter 5. I'm going to be reading a few verses there. I won't be able to read all the verses there, but I'm just going to read a few verses. So Mark chapter 5, and I'm going to be reading verses 2 to 5 and then verse 15. When you found it, say amen. Can we all stand for the reading of the word of God? So Mark chapter 5, and I'm going to be reading verse 2 to 5 and then verse 15. It says, and when he has come out, he was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him. No, not with the chains, because that he had often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And, verse 15 now, and they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind and they were afraid. And our topic for today, with God, all things are possible to them that believe. Today, um, this topic, with God, all things are possible to them that believe. And note that I didn't say with man, with God, all things, not 90% of the things, all things, 100 out of 100, all things are possible to them that believe. And this is so assuring and this is so comforting and this is so encouraging because some things you want to really accomplish but you can't do it within yourself. You wish that, and at times you, you go to man for help, and man, you, 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 you wish that they could help you, but they can't help you. But I'm telling you that with God, Hallelujah. all things are possible Amen. to him that believe. And I don't care what it is. Um, you, no matter what situation it is, no matter how, what it pertains to, no matter what the subject I'm telling, I'm telling you, with God, Amen. all things are possible. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 This gives me great encouragement and gives, gives me great assurance because knowing fully well that we have a God who can undertake and handle any situation, Amen. any case, Amen. it's not too hard for him Amen. because he's the God said, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? No. There's nothing, absolutely nothing to hard for him. With God, all things are possible to him that believe it. And when, we, when I say with God, I mean the God, the Yahweh God, the El Shaddai, the Almighty God, Jehovah, our Redeemer, with God. This is the God I'm talking about. I'm not talking about no dead God. I'm talking about a true and living God. Amen. With God, Amen. all things are possible. Hallelujah. And we know that in Hebrews 13 verse 8 it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it shows us here that time has no change on our God. Our God is immutable, unchangeable. He cannot change. The miracles that he did in the past of course he can do these miracles today. Because time has, no, has not changed him. The miracles that he did in the past, he can do today. And he will be able to do tomorrow. Amen. And this topic that uh, I, I said, with God all things are possible, is based on one time a man brought 
his son to Jesus and he said that he brought this man, this son, because this son had a dumb spirit. And he brought his son to the disciples to get cure or to, for them to heal him. And they couldn't heal him. And so the man eventually brought him to Jesus. And Jesus said to this man, How long has this been affecting him? How long has this sickness been affecting him? And he said, from a child. And not only so, so it showed that it was for a long period of time. Not only so, oftentimes the spirit wanted to throw this man in fire, also in water. Not only just to throw him into water and fire, but to destroy him. That was the whole intention of the spirit. And Jesus said unto this man, If this man told Jesus that if there is something that you can do, if there's anything that you can do, have compassion on us and help us because we are in a very, very bad situation. All hope seems to be gone. Jesus, can you do anything for us? The situation is grave. The situation is real bad and the situations seem hopeless. But Jesus, we are bringing this situation to you. Have compassion on us. And not only so, but to help us. We need help. This man was crying out to Jesus, I need your help. I need your intervention. I need you to come through for me. I tried the disciples and the disciples disappointed me and failed me. But here am I, I'm bringing the son to you, Jesus. Have compassion on me. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ replied and told this man, if you can believe, all things are possible. Hallelujah. To him that believe it. If you can only believe, no matter how, 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 how bad you think the situation is, if you can only believe, all things are possible to them that believe. And the father gave Jesus a very honest reply. I believe, but help thou my unbelief. So it seems to me that there was some doubt in this man, but this man was willing to ask God, if there's any doubt, take away doubt. Amen. Because I want to believe. Hallelujah. Because you said that if we can only believe, all things are possible. And I want to have a hundred percent faith in you. Amen. What you're telling me. Take away all doubt. Yes. Help my unbelief. Amen. I believe. Help thou my unbelief. And Jesus responded and spoke to the spirit and said said to the deaf and dumb spirit to come out yes. and he rebuked this deaf, the deaf and dumb spirit and the spirit that was in the boy poor the boy when the boy saw so that he fell down as if he was dead yes. but even if he was dead even if he was dead Jesus Christ said that I am the resurrection and the life. Even the boy was dead. When the devil um, came out of him, Jesus Christ had the power to raise him up. And those people who were looking on saying, this boy is now dead. We thought that he came to help. But for me, it seemed to me that his, he, 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 instead of making the situation better, he made it worse. This guy is now dead. And it seemed to them that he was dead. But Jesus Christ, hallelujah. He told the, the man, if you can only believe, all things are possible. And Jesus had the power. He just raised, hold, held up the guy's, the, the boy's hand and raised him up. Hallelujah. And this boy was restored back to good health. Hallelujah. 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 This boy who was deaf 
and dumb couldn't hear or speak, could know, speak, and could hear everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. With God, all things uh, are possible Hallelujah. to them that believe. Hallelujah. And our passage is previously is after Jesus Christ rebuked the wind and the waves. They were traveling on the, on the lake and there was a great storm and Jesus Christ rebuked the storm and said, peace be still. And there was a great peace and they were able to travel on the other side. And when they went to the other side, in verse 2, chapter 5, verse 2. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. This man had an unclean spirit and he came to Jesus. And I was thinking that this man was living among the tombs, all by himself. Man had given up on him. But when man gives, g g give up on you, Jesus Christ would never, 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 never give up on you. He promises never to leave you, nor forsake you. And man give up on us sometimes. But Jesus Christ would never, would never. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When even man said that we are hopeless, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 He still loves us with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. He would not give up on us. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. This man, and I was even thinking, this man wasn't always so. He couldn't be always a uh, demon possessed and be living among tombs. Of course, he must come from some kind of family. But, I don't know what his circumstance was. I don't know what caused him to be, to be like this. But this man found himself living among the tombs. He was more with the dead than the living. And it doesn't matter what state we find ourselves in. Jesus Christ, his love still comes and will bring us. No matter how far we are. His love will bring us close to him. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. This man found himself living among the tombs. And verse 3 even expounded more. He said he had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. This man was so possessed that nobody wanted to be even associated with him. He was isolated. And also, no man could tame him. He was like a wild animal. No man could tame him. Many times they tried to bound him and no matter what chain they put on, he just burst them. And also, it says in verse 5, that night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting up himself with stone. This man was tormented. And you might say, is this relevant for these times? I'm telling you, there are lots of people who are demon-possessed. Lots of people who are you know, bound with all kind of chains, bound mentally, bound spiritually, bound. Just bound with, to all kind of vice, all kind of sinful practices, bound. But Jesus Christ, he said... That the spirit of the Lord is upon him because he has anointed him 
to preach good tidings unto the poor. And he also, he came to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners. Hallelujah. No matter what prison you find yourself in, Jesus has the keys to open every prison door. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, he has the power. He has the keys to open every prison door. Hallelujah. This man was born not physically, but also spiritually and mentally. Hallelujah. But Jesus Christ has come to set the captives free. So when Jesus Christ showed up on, on the boat, and I, I, I was saying now that there are other places that Jesus Christ could have gone. He didn't have to really check um, and bother with this, with this demon-possessed man. And many of us, we would want to avoid these people. But Jesus Christ, you know, that's, that's why the Bible says, for God so loved the world. That's what we were studying in the Sunday school. For God so loved the world, so that whosoever... He doesn't pick out whosoever. Even the demon possessed man, Jesus Christ came to save. Hallelujah. And note that Jesus Christ, he doesn't see us for what we are, but what he can make us to become. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this man being... And I, I would want to believe that this man was in a, a state. Cause he was cutting up himself. He, um, a, a, a doubt. He had, he had little or no clothes on. And he was he, his hair and all these things probably looked rough and things like that. But no matter how wild you are, Jesus Christ can tame you. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when this man saw Jesus afar off in verse 6 it says that he ran and worship him and that's why Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 says wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee must bow every tongue confess no matter how much demons this man had they had to bow at the feet of Jesus you gotta bow at the feet of Jesus. Because Jesus has the ultimate power. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. And. Demons have to bow at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. Every name must bow. Every tongue must confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. So this man. Saw Jesus. And he came. And he bowed at Jesus feet. And he said that he worshipped the demons were subjected to a higher power. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are serving a God who has the ultimate power. And that's why we shouldn't be afraid of demon-possessed people and demon-possessed, you know, because we have the power. We have the power to cast out devils. That's why he said. That's why he said. In my name you shall cast out devils. Amen. Of course we have the power. We shouldn't be running from demon-possessed people. We have the power. In the name of Jesus. And there the, con the, 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 the conversation start In verse 7. And he cried out with a loud voice. And said to Jesus. Thou son of the most high. I adjure thee by God. That thou torment me not. This was the spirit speaking within this man. And don't fool yourself. The spirit's. The demons, they know and recognize Jesus. Of course, we, are, we, we also, um, in, uh, when Peter, uh, when Paul, uh, in the New Testament, they said that these men were casting out devils and, and are trying to cast out a, a demon out to this person. And the demon replied saying, Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you? So it shows that the devils recognize Jesus. They know the power of Jesus. 
So don't come with no other force trying to cast out these devils because you will be defeated. And he said that the Bible, um, that this man who had, was possessed, put some licks on them that they went out almost naked. So this, these demons that were in the man, they recognized Jesus. And Jesus said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he started to speak to them. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered and saying, My name is Legion, saying that we are many. And I looked up the word Legion, and you're talking about six. This Legion means 6,000 men. I'm not saying that there were 6,000 demons, but this refers to a lot, a many. It doesn't, um, it seems to be a whole, a whole, many, many, several demons, hundreds, or probably thousands of demons. Can one man contain so many demons? Could one man body so many demons but it shows that the enemy comes to kill to steal and to destroy that's his intention and he will bring any number of demons with intention to kill to steal and to destroy us but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world amen and these demons start negotiating with Jesus that because there were some swines, 2,000 swines, they were feeding on the mountain. And these, this, um, these demons said, do not torment us, do not kill us, do not, send us, do not send us into exile so quick. Let us go into these swines. And they ran, they came out of this man in verse 13. And they came out of this man and they went into the herd and ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and they were about 2,000. So 2,000 pigs, and all of them went into the seawater, ran violently down the water, down to the seawater, and drowned. Whole 2,000 pigs. So it shows that the kind of force and the power that was in this man. But no matter how powerful he was, he had to bow to the feet, at the feet of Jesus. He had to bow to God. And Jesus Christ, and it says, and they came to Jesus, those who were feeding the pigs, when they saw all that, they went and spread or reported what had happened. And when they came to Jesus and saw this man who was possessed with the devil and had the legion clothed in his right mind, they were afraid. Could you imagine a person who you know who was possessed, one who was cutting up himself, always crying and all these things, night and day, was now clothed in his right mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God that we serve. This man was demon possessed. And I don't know how long he was possessed, but no matter how long it is, Jesus Christ came on the scene and delivered this man. And now this man was clothed in his right mind. Hallelujah. And that's why he says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We have a sound mind once we are with God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. And this man wanted to follow Jesus because Jesus now they, they, they came, and you would want to believe that having done such a powerful miracle, that everyone will be happy. But 
It wasn't so. It wasn't so at all. This man who they couldn't control for years was now clothed in the right mind. But it seems to me that man prefer if you stay in your own state rather than to get a release, rather than to be delivered, rather than to get a breakthrough. It seems to me that they preferred that this man had stayed how he was. But Jesus Christ came to set the captives free. Hallelujah. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This man had a change of heart, a change of mind. This man was a total brand new man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was now being able to associate himself with people. Before he couldn't associate himself with people, he had to be by, by, by the dead. But now Jesus Christ came and gave him salvation. Hallelujah. And this man, when Jesus Christ was about to leave, because they, the people of that town wanted him to leave, because they're probably saying that Jesus Christ is creating too much havoc in the place. So they, they want this man to leave. So when Jesus Christ was about to leave, this man who was demon-possessed also asked Jesus, can he come with them? But Jesus Christ said, go back. Go to your friends. And go back to your home. And tell them what great things. Hallelujah. What great things I have done. Hallelujah. The Lord has done great things for us. We of our heart has been made glad. Great things. And nothing can beat a testimony like this. When you know that this man was possessed and he goes back with his testimony, I was born, but now God has freed me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing can beat a testimony that can say, I was wild, I was out of my mind, but now I have sound mind. Yes. Nothing can beat the testimony of a person who you know fully well was demon possessed but now he's been transformed by the power of God hallelujah. hallelujah and this man went and he put the Bible say he started to publish the great news and they all marveled at what the Lord had done so this is just one example and I have several examples but I won't go through all the examples today I will just give you two more examples that with God, all things are possible to them that believe. With God, all things are possible to them that believe. And when Jesus had sailed to the other side, there was much people gathered. I don't know where people um, get news from or heard about Jesus coming. But he said that when he went to the other side, there was much people anticipating his coming. There were lots of people there waiting for him to come. And that's why he said everywhere he went, he was doing good. And everywhere he went, he had a crowd with him. There was much people gathered unto him to the other side. And behold, there came unto him one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his feet. Now we had a, a ruler. You, you um, probably in these times, you would have said probably a dignitary, probably a well-respected man, well, probably big in government, have a prominent position, but probably an MP. But the problem is, this man had a problem. I tell you, problems come to everybody. To high, to low, white, black. Problem has no discrimination. Problems come to everybody. This man find himself with a problem. You might ask, what was his problem? The problem that this man had, he had a little daughter, and the Bible said that she was sick at the point to death his daughter 
His daughter was very, very sick, almost to the point of death. It looks like any time now, this daughter would die. And Jesus Christ stepped in right on time. That's the kind of God that we serve. Jesus kept, um, came through for this woman just in time. Jairus came to Jesus and he besought him greatly. He beseeched him greatly. He asked him, Master, I know that you have a very tight schedule, but please. He was begging, please, can you come to my house and touch my daughter? Please, Master. But on his way to Jairus' house, there was this woman. Hallelujah. 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 With God, all things are possible. This woman who had this issue of blood for 13 long years. As I said, no matter how long it is, we are serving a God who can change every situation because with God, all things are possible. To them that believe. This woman was, had this hemorrhage for 13 long years and she tried everything. She tried doctors. She tried all kind of physicians. I would want to believe that she tried all kind of herbal remedy. She tried everything that she could really, anything, any um, remedy that anyone suggested, she was the first one to try it. And so it is sometimes we try everything. And everything that we try turns out to be nothing, to be worthless, to be unprofitable or, or, or useless. But Jesus Christ stepped in right on time. And this woman said, if I can only touch the hem of his garment... I would want to believe that, as I said, there were lots of people crowded around Jesus. So the, it's not to say that Jesus Christ was exposed and she could easily just go and touch the hem of his garment. There were lots of people around Jesus. But the intention of this woman, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. This was an act of faith. This was an act of assurance. If I can only touch. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because it's only one touch Amen. from the master's hand Amen. that will change everything. Amen. I don't matter what it is. No matter what it is. Only one touch we need. Amen. Hallelujah. From the master's hand changes everything. Hallelujah. 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 And this woman with this desire forced away and she was pressing away and pressing away towards Jesus. And I would want to believe that a few times that this woman probably had a, a few elbows but she was determined I must touch him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I must touch the hem of the garment. I don't know when I would get another chance. I must touch him. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And if we be that determined just to touch the hem of his garment, I know that there will be a change. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And this woman forced away. This woman pressed away. This woman in, um, was so determined, no matter if she get elbow or not, she was pressing away to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And she eventually came to Jesus and she touched the hem of his garment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when she touched the hem of his garment, something happened. Hallelujah. He said, the Bible said that immediately the, the, the fountain that was flowing dried up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have a situation that's haunting you and plaguing you for 13 long years and you get an immediate touch. Hallelujah. Something must really um, spring in this woman to give God thanks and praise because something that's been plaguing her for 13 long years was now cured, was now healed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This woman received the healing touch from the master's hand. Hallelujah. And uh, this woman, we all know the story that this woman 
uh, Jesus Christ asked, who touched me? And the disciples were saying, Master, you can't see, there are lots of people here putting up on you and lots of people touching you. But Jesus Christ said that somebody, hallelujah, somebody touched me. Other people probably uh, touching up on me just for all kind of other reasons. But this woman was desperate for a touch and she touched me and she received healing because healing virtue has left my body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This woman was complete. And you see, Jesus Christ wasn't going to heal this woman. Jesus Christ was on his way to Jairus. But this woman intercepted Jesus. And this woman said, I don't know if I'll get another chance. But I'm going to intercept him. And I'm going to push my way. And I'm going to press my way. And I'm going to get my healing today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This woman decides she must get her healing today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With God, all things are possible to them that believe. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. With God, all things are possible to them that believe. And Jesus went, was now on his way. Two, after that woman got healing, Jesus Christ kept on towards Jairus' door, um, home. And when he was on his way, there was someone who came and told Jesus, don't bother, bother the master. Don't bother the master anymore. The situation has gone from bad to worse. As a matter of fact, the situation has gone to its worst state. The child that, that you want Jesus Christ to heal is now dead. So give up. And sometimes we have some dead situations. Some things that we consider to be dead. Some things that we consider to be hopeless. But no matter how hopeless this is, I'm saying with God, all things are possible to them that believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jairus now find himself not only with a sick child, but a now a dead child. But Jesus Christ was very quick to rush Jairus and, and prevent this from even lodging in Jairus' mind because what would happen it would just bring doubt and unbelief to him. But Jesus Christ, even though that child was dead, he knows fully well he has the power to raise up every dead person. Hallelujah. He had the power. So he kept walking. He kept moving towards the, to, to, to the home. And by this time, there were some whalers, some people who came and they were now more or less want to um, start mourning, start creating a, a scene like it was some kind of funeral service. But even though it was a funeral service, Jesus Christ came to transform every funeral service to a resurrection service. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ was now on his way to the Jairus home. And the first thing that Jesus Christ did is to put out all the mourners, put all out the daughters. Because first thing they said, that this woman, this child is now dead. Because Jesus Christ said, this woman was only sleeping. But they said, no, she's dead. And they wanted to laugh him to scorn. But Jesus Christ, he's the omniscient God. Hallelujah. He's the all-knowing God. And no matter what they tried to uh, persuade him or not to bother with it, Jesus Christ has the ultimate power. Hallelujah. He knew fully well what he can do. And he wasn't al going to allow these doubters no. to deter him no. from what he wanted to do. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as I told you, when the person came to tell, Jesus, um, tell Jairus what had happened, 
Jesus was very quick. And in verse 26, chapter 5, verse 36, and it says, And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Hallelujah. This is very important. Be not afraid. Do not be disheartened by the message that you hear. Only believe. This is the prerequisite. This is the requirement. All things are possible to them that believe it. So once you have faith, you're in big business with God. Because faith in God can move mountains. Faith can cover in trouble's feet. And he said, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Only believe. So, they came to the house, and Jesus Christ took his three disciples, Peter, James, and John, and the brother of James. And when he came to the house, he said that there was this weeping, and this wailing, and all this to do. The damsel is now dead. But Jesus Christ said, no. She's only sleeping. When you come to your extreme end, when you come to your wit's end, that's God's opportunity to start working. And many times we come to our wit's end. Many times we come to our, 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 our end. But when you come to your end, that's when Jesus Christ begins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the reason why God does it sometimes and many times is because he wants all the praise, all the, 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 the glory to go to him. Because many times if we do it, first thing we're going to say, oh, it's because of me doing this or because I was able to do that. And we start to give ourselves praise. But Jesus Christ wants all the praise for himself. All the glory must go to him. And he he's cast out all these people who are um, sorrowing and wailing and all these things. Put them out. And the Bible says in verse 40 that when he went in, in verse 40, and they laughed him to scorn, but when they have put them all out, he take the father and the mother and the damsel and them that were with him and entered there and entered in where the damsel was lying. Hallelujah. And verse 41 says, And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha coming, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. Hallelujah. Not many words. He didn't give a whole, whole paragraph of, of, of words. Just a few words. Damsel, arise. But these words were words of authority. Hallelujah. Amen. These words were words of power. Damsel, I said to you, arise. No matter what dead state you might find yourself in, there is a word of upliftment. There's a word of comfort. There's a word of assurance. Arise. And it says, and straightway the damsel arose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Straightway. Without any hesitation, this damsel arose. Hallelujah. And not only so, because you might say the damsel is, is, is probably drowsy or something like that. No. The damsel also walked. Hallelujah. 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 For she was of the age of 12 years. This, this damsel who was sick was now restored to good health. Amen. Hallelujah. Because of Jesus' intervention. The Lord God in the midst of us. Amen. He is mighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is in our midst. Hallelujah. He is mighty. The Lord of hosts is with us. 
and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And when Jesus did that, he said, and they all saw the damsel walking now, they were all astonished. Hallelujah. They were all astonished with great astonishment. Yes. That which they considered to be dead was now alive, walking about. Hallelujah. 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 That's the kind of God that we serve. That's the kind of God that we, we, we are serving. We are serving the true and living God. And these are just a few examples I've given you today that we are serving the true and living God. We are serving the omnipotent God, being all-powerful, the omniscient God, all-knowing, yes. and the God who is omnipresent Hallelujah. everywhere. Hallelujah. And his word to us today, that with God, all things are possible to them that believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what you might be experiencing today. I don't know what challenges you might be, be facing today. But my word, the word of God has come to us today yes. saying that with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. 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 Take courage today that with God, all things are possible. You might be believing God for something special and he's saying to you today, with God. All things are possible. Hallelujah. 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 So take comfort. Yes. Take assurance from this word. Because we are serving a God who cannot lie. He's not a God that who shall lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. We are serving a God. What he, once he said it, he will do it. Amen. With God, all things are possible to them that believe. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.